I'd like to note that while I'm using Quicken Essentials for my example, the same concepts apply equally to versions of Quicken for Windows. The first time you use Quicken, it will create a new blank file. The data file name is actually listed in the title bar of the window, and the default location where files are stored are in your user documents folder. If for some reason you're not seeing your file in the documents folder, you can always command click on the title bar and that will show you the path of where your file is located or you can use spotlight and search for .quicken data and this will show you all the Quicken Essentials files that are on your machine. Quicken for Windows users should search for a .qdf file and that will bring up all Quicken for Windows files. One thing to be aware of is that Quicken uses a database to store its data. As you work in the program it's constantly saving all your changes to disk. That's why you won't find the traditional save in the file menu because it's automatically doing it in the background. Now some versions of Quicken actually you will see a save a copy as and that has a different purpose. That's more when you want to extract all or parts of your transactions into a different data file. But for the average user, don't worry about saving. Quicken will do it in the background for you. At first blush, it might appear convenient that Quicken is automatically saving our data, but there's a drawback. It's also automatically saving any mistakes which we might make. That's why it's imperative you keep backups of your data file. So that way, in case you screw up, you have something to go back to. And yes, there's some versions of Quicken that actually have an undo command, and you can go back several levels and fix mistakes you might make, but these undos are not persisted forever, so that's why it's always a good idea to have a backup of your data file. In all versions of Quicken, to create a copy as a backup, you go up to File and Backup to Disk. Alternatively, you can go to the Finder and find your file in your Documents folder and make copies of it there. If you wish to rename your file, you'd also do it in the Finder, but you have to quit Quicken before you actually can rename it. And you find the file in the Finder and then you'll rename it. Windows users can accomplish the same using Windows Explorer. Here, I have a graphic showing the structure of a typical data file. At the topmost level, we see the data file name just as it would show in the Finder or in Windows Explorer. Within a single data file, you can have as many accounts as you like. Notice in this example, I use three. Now let's take a look at this with an actual data file. If you notice, here's John's finances, just as it is indicated at the top of that org chart. And over on the left, I have my three different accounts, just as I'd had in that chart. Selecting each one will show at the top of the banner which account I'm looking at, but they're still all within the same data file. Your different accounts, you can either set them up at the beginning when you uh, first create your data file, or you can set up accounts at any point as you need them. Just click down at the lower left and choose what account you need to add. Some versions of Quicken do have limits on the total number of accounts that you can have, but for the average user, they'll never exceed this limit. Don't worry about having too many accounts. You're not going to see a performance hit. And if you have older accounts that you no longer use, let's say you've closed a bank account, don't delete it. Just simply hide it. Most users need only one data file. There's many reasons why. First of all, it's a lot easier to keep your accounts in a single spot than have them scattered across multiple files. This makes file maintenance a lot easier. You only have a single file that you need to back up. If you ever upgrade to a newer version of Quicken, you only have to do that once, and you don't have the confusion of trying to figure out what accounts are in different files. Moreover, if we go back and look at the Quicken file structure, we can see that the lists such as categories, pages, and tags, and the reports and tools are global to all accounts. By being so, all your lists will be consistent and moreover, you can run reports across all your accounts. If you're trying to create a tax report for year-end, it would be impossible to do if you had all your accounts in separate files. By having all your accounts together, you can move transactions between accounts or make transfers between accounts. As a side note, all my previous justifications for keeping your accounts in a single file equally apply to keeping all of your transactions housed in a single one. What I mean by this is that some users insist on performing year-end copies to chop up their data into separate files. 
I don't advise this, nor do I know any serious Quicken user who recommends doing such. By doing so, you're, you make historical data reporting impossible, and you make file maintenance a nightmare. I know too many users who have come to regret breaking up their files. Let your data grow in a single file. You won't see a performance hit, and again, it is easier to babysit one single file. Now, I will get off my soapbox regarding single Quicken files. I do realize that there are times when it is better to keep separate files with accounts and lists exclusive from one another. Typical cases would include wishing to keep your personal finances separate from business finances. The business needn't be yours. As an example, you could be the treasurer of a church or a scout troop. You might also want to keep your personal finances separate from other people's finances you might manage. An example would be taking care of the finances of an aging relative. Or, if you have family members who share a user account but wish to keep their finances separate, then a separate Quicken file is prudent. I hope you found the previous information useful. It might be obvious to some, but others are sometimes confused by the differences between an account register and data files. To recapitulate, while you can have as many Quicken files as you like, if you're tracking your personal finances, you likely will only need one. And within that one file, you can track all accounts you have or have had. In short, you're creating one single repository that contains all your financial history. And since everything is in one spot, you can easily generate reports that represent your complete financial life. Good luck!